It's Mirce's voice. So this is our new uh, 32 amp perchlorate cell. Yes, you heard that right. 32 amp perchlorate cell. So temperature is now 47.4. It makes use of uh, two pumps for active cooling. The reason why there's air is to increase heat transfer by creating turbulence in the surface. I, it seems very futile, but that's all I've got for now. It uses a vin one, that one, that other pump has a venturi, which allows the introduction of the air. That's our operating current. Yep. And I'm feeding it through a pump. It's running at about five volts. And this is my. Uh, this will determine the uh, current running through the cell. I just have to change it because it changed right now. So we end up with 204.82 milliamps per centimeter squared. 1.7 is the resistance of the shunt. I've tested it before running. Uh, 154.8 is the, uh, cur uh, the uh, surface area of the electrode. And yeah, we're operating at this current density. It should take about 0 0.9 days to finish when the, as I checked it in that online calculator. But I'm going to run it for more because I don't know about this efficiency. The cathodes are uh, actually made of graphite because I'm so sick of titanium. It embrittles, it starts bending towards the other side, and it's the most annoying thing ever. Now, one thing, one thing to note here. So if I cut the venturi, you can see that this... It's hard to cut the venturi. You can see that the cell actually looks clear, which means that there's no bullshit happening in there like electrodes corroding. This is the first time I've ever seen the cell run clear. I've used a new plating process which which, which is at an elevated temperature. The bath consists of uh, lead perchlorate which only needs lead metal to be immersed to regenerate it. And it just uses an aquarium heater to keep the temperature 40 degrees by partially submerging an aquarium heater. It will not be able to actually read the temperature going through it, which means that it will run hotter. Uh, small note to people who keep fish, do not partially submerge your aquarium heater. Anyway, yeah, as you need the current has gone up now. And that will be it. So in a few hours, this should produce quite a lot of product. I'm going to leave it for a day though, or more. Short update, even after running at an incredibly cursed operating condition, the electrode is completely fine and yeah, I've also rubbed against it. Absolutely no residue on my uh, finger. So it's running completely fine. The uh, solution still looks clear. I mean from the top, that's just a bit of residue that was from the probably from the cathodes they don't look so good but yeah I've also tested some of this product and it indeed has form per chlorates because the product uh, immediately precipitates upon contact with uh, potassium chloride which I can show in a little bit so Here's some product from the uh, 32 amp cell. Let's uh, drop it into this uh, potassium chloride solution over here. You can see it's immediately forming those uh, white precipitates upon addition, which fall to the bottom. I poked it through that top layer, so that's not included at all. But yeah, you can see there's kind of stuff at the bottom now that's a lot thicker than before. So yeah, it's producing perchlorates now and it's only been a few hours. According to the online calculator, it should take one day to fully convert. But I don't think it's going to be that efficient, so I'm going to give it two days. Hello, hello! So, guess what? I have upgraded again because I realized that that little cooler was going up to like 65 degrees Celsius which the reason why is because the cooler sides keeps the heat in so because the sides keep the heat in it's very bad but now I've gotten an aquarium that has glass sides 
and it also has a larger volume, so it means that the temperature will be much better controlled. And I've also got the same turbulence going on. And the current has dropped just because the solution's a lot colder and the current will rise over time again. But as you can see, look how clear this electrolyte is. Right now it's around, uh, I don't have my calculator with me, but I'd say it's a few milliamps per centimeter squared. It's probably in the perchlorate production range, but uh, as you can see, that, that uh, graphite electrode is, has, is really loving being a cathode. But the anode in the center, I mean, it is obviously doing its thing. But yeah, this is really insane current uh, densities that are happening in that cathode over there. At least graphite doesn't embrittle, am I right? And look how clear that electrolyte is. There is almost nothing in there. It's just wonderful. So yeah, this is the update of my perchlorate cell. And of course I got the light. Everything's better with lights. Ah, it's been approximately two days, so cell is still running. I really takes long to do the conversion of the uh, final tiny amount of chlorate, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Might run this for three or four days just cause. So yeah, that's just a small update. The water look doesn't look so bad. There's nothing on the floor of the thing. It it it, it normally does become this brownish thing. This is uh, micro erosion that's going on at the later stages. But since these electrodes are easy to plate anyway, I don't give a crap. So yeah, this is the cell after running. And see, water is still mostly clear. However, there is micro erosion on the electrode. So, this is the electrode after running. The coating is still just as thick as ever. However, you can see the cathodes are plated with a nice layer of lead, which is, you know, to be expected because cathodes. But as you can see, the anode doesn't look very much damaged at all, if at all, despite running at the limits of its current density at 204 milliamps per centimeter squared. Well, meanwhile, the electrode is looking nice and clear thanks to those cathodes. And this uh, solution is pretty much almost pure perchlorate with just very little chlorate left. And towards that end, I'm gonna be uh, processing this and boiling it down after filtering, I guess. So maybe Sir's voice. So the run is finished, but we're gonna do some qualitative testing. Here's a bit of the solution. First, we test for excess chlorate, which can be dropped into this. Uh, sulfuric and hydrochloric acid mixture or it's technically sulfuric acid and salt which is a highly sensitive test no bubbling has occurred which means we're all good now this is uh, potassium chloride which we just stick it through yep that instant precipitation confirms it the two tests confirm two things one we don't have any uh, chlorate left in the mixture or at least very very little two we have perchlorate here's this voice so when boiling this solution down yeah now we've gotten ourselves a lumpy lumpy uh, mass of uh, sodium perchlorate in a hydrated form now it turns out I think I had more chlorate inputted the normal because I did use dirty chlorate which means that there's a lot of nose chloride when I started so it means that this is potentially more than what I've put in because it had to convert the rest of it first so this is a lot basically this is a lot anyway once this is all done I will weigh all of it out after some time, uh, it's dried out, and this is how much uh, sodium perchlorate I got. Here's this voice. We're gonna weigh all our product very slowly and carefully. I 
I'm gonna continue this offhand. I can't do it with one hand. Kinda sad we only got 586 grams. I wonder. I swear I put more. I guess since I did not have any sort of uh, demister, well, it didn't work. I guess I got a lot of evaporative and uh, mist losses, and that kind of sucks. And I filtered it several times too. So, yeah. This might also explain the really abysmal runtime because the solution was probably not very concentrated. Freaking current efficiency was really bad for sure, this runtime. But anyway, 586 grams, not gonna complain.